When it comes to Mother's Day, every single year is a different landmine. And when it comes to infertility or miscarriages, every holiday is a different landmine. Every month, every day is a different landmine. But after eight years of experience being childless, I have 10 do's and don'ts for surviving Mother's Day. In case you are new to my channel, my name is Ashley Sue, and I was diagnosed with menopause at the age of 30. And it was a month after Mark and I got married and right when we started trying to start our family. We've dealt with a lot of the infertility issues and we always planned to adopt. So adoption wasn't even a plan B for us. We just, you know, we thought we were going to both conceive children and adopt children. If you are familiar with infertility, if you've, if you've been part of this unfortunate family for a long time, you probably have your own experiences with these things. And if you are new to infertility or miscarriage, I am sorry. I am sorry that you have to watch this video. I'm sorry that we have to go through another Mother's Day remembering that we feel forgotten, left out, insignificant, forgotten by God, unloved, hopeless. <laughs> we aren't any of those things. We aren't insignificant or forgotten or unloved, mm -hmm. but it certainly can feel that way. And especially when you see the whole world seeming to celebrate something that you've wanted your entire life and feel so far away from ever experiencing. But I wanna throw this out there to you. This isn't just for women who have been trying. This may also be for women who are single and yet here you are again, feeling irrelevant, insignificant, unloved, forgotten. As a veteran to this, I have 10 survival tips for Mother's Day that I have honed over the years. On my list of 10 do's and don'ts, Three of them are don'ts, and I am going to start with them because if you do any of these don'ts, you are screwed from the beginning. Your weekend will suck, your Mother's Day will blow, you will be painfully aware of your, your hurt, of your struggle. And in case you haven't been through an empty armed Mother's Day yet, you're going to be painfully aware of your struggle anyhow, so you know, why maximize your pain? It's just, it's just foolish. So here are three non-negotiable don'ts. Do not let anyone guilt you into doing something you aren't comfortable with. Even your own mom or grandma, do not let them make you feel like you owe it to them to do something that you know will cause you pain and discomfort just because you're not a mom and you don't get your way. I actually ran into that situation last Mother's Day. My beloved grandmother, who is a second mom to me, my grandmother and my mom went to church together for Mother's Day and that's awesome, they go to the same church. I happened to be in town that weekend. My grandma really wanted me to go to church with them that day. And for a couple weeks, I struggled with that. I knew she wanted me to, but I didn't want to. Mother's Day is painful. And anyone who had children easily doesn't understand that. They just don't. You know, these are two women who hurt for me. I know they do in deep, deep ways, but neither of them know my struggle. And the thought of going to a church on Mother's Day to be surrounded by people celebrating moms and to be around all the women who are holding their children on Mother's Day and to see all the little kids playing and all the women who were so proud to have their babies while also having me on display, while I have to go around and introduce myself to 50 of my grandma's friends. Mm -mm. You need to be able to be real. You don't need to be in a fishbowl or on display or have to fake happy emotions. Like you just don't need that for yourself. So non-negotiably, don't let anyone guilt you. Number two, do not 
get on social media and that is non-negotiable and it would be hard especially like I mean right now you're on YouTube so there's a good chance you're somebody who just like casually scrolls you know what a landmine they constantly are again you're gonna you're gonna see all of your friends post of their toddlers and their captions about how being a mother is the greatest love you're going to see I didn't know love until I knew you you're gonna be bum Barded, just one slap in the face after another showing you what you are afraid right now you're never going to experience. Why would you do that to yourself? Like, don't. You need to avoid Facebook. You need to avoid Instagram. Come back on Monday. Social media will still be there for you. And frankly, even on Monday, posts from Sunday are still gonna pop up on you. You just don't need the baby parade in your face. You don't. And number three, you need to stay off of whatever infertility board or infertility support groups you're part of, stay off. I know you may want to turn there for support for people who get what you're going through. But the thing is on those boards, there's often- Mel? Mel? Are you reminding me that I'm your mommy? Are you? Those people on the- infertility boards and the chat groups and the Facebook groups. Yes, they totally get what you're going through. But the thing is, there's a lot of anger and hostility and bitterness in those groups and forums also. That's not the type of, that's not the type of community that you need. That's not the type of communication you need. That's not the type of understanding you need. Growing your bitterness and spinning in more anger and more frustration and picking up other people's energy like that, that is not going to heal your broken heart. It is not gonna put a baby in your arms any faster. All right, so on to seven things, options, things you can do to survive Mother's Day and maybe even enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> Number one, celebrate your own mom or grandmom or stepmom or mother-in-law. These are great options. Hopefully you have one of those in your life that is worth celebrating. Spend some time with her, call her, just focus on what a great mom or stepmom or grandmom or mother-in-law you have. Bring her some lunch, take her a pie. If you can't do those things, and perhaps she's no longer alive, go to the store, get your favorite pie or her favorite pie or cake mix or whatever, come home and enjoy it. Like have a date with her even if you can't be with her. I do that for my daddy's birthday. I go have birthday brunch with him. Also, do you know an older woman, like someone older than you who has lost their child? I used to work with a woman who, she is a generation older than me. She has actually children who are older than me and her oldest son died tragically. It had been over a year and she told me it still felt like she was missing a limb. I can't imagine how hard Mother's Day is for her. She's not supposed to think about the child who can't call her for Mother's Day. If you know a woman who's going through something like that, has been through something like that, just call her or take her a, a cup of coffee or a piece of pie, take her something. Even if you wanna like secretly do it, just take her a little card, write a card telling her how sorry you are, for her loss and that you were thinking about her on Mother's Day and go tuck that on her front door. Make it about somebody else who frankly is probably hurting worse than we are. Number three, if you are blessed with a church family, lean on them. They want to help you. Call your pastor and call your pastor's wife and talk to them like now. Talk to them about the childless being honored on Mother's Day also. That when they do a prayer over the congregation on Mother's Day, if they also will make it a priority just to mention the prayer, to pray for the women who are still without children, whether they are single or whether they are facing fertility battles, that they are mothers in their heart and yearning for the experience of Mother's Day. Talk to your pastor and pastor's wife and urge them not to forget parts of their congregation who may be very silently going through what they are. Number four, if you are single and you are blessed with single girlfriends, have a sex in the city type of moment. A sex in the city moment would be awesome. A brunch where it is gal pals 
and no stress about infertility, no stress about being babyless, no, just go have mimosas and good food and laugh and talk about what book you've been reading lately or your favorite movie you've been watching or something. Just, you know, like get together with your girlfriends and laugh. But I warn you, Mother's Day is the number one day of the year that people eat out. So you really do wanna do like breakfast or brunch or even host it, like have them come over to your house and host a gal pal brunch just to clear your mind and have a good time. Just laugh. Number five, binge watch. Binge watch, everything sucks. If you are approximately my age or older, then you'll remember the 90s and you'll appreciate the 90s nostalgia vibe of everything sucks. But it's also a show about hope, about redemption, about second chances. It's a really beautiful, good show, and I can't say enough about it. I've already made two little videos about it, and I included it in my April favorites. Binge watch it. It takes like two or three hours. It's like the course of a movie. If you are struggling with infertility of any capacity, what to expect when you're expecting. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Find a way to stream it, watch it, Hulu it, Netflix it, I don't even know. But it is a joyful, beautiful movie that anyone in this struggle can relate to. And then if you just need like something that is joyful, watch Last Holiday with Queen Latifah. It's amazing. It is a story about living your best life when you feel light years away from your dreams. Number six, are you blessed to be isolated and a bit alone and spend time doing what your heart wants to do? Pray, grieve, cry. Don't get on Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna reiterate that. Do not get on social media and make yourself miserable. You hurt enough without the bombardment of that. Be within yourself. Like turn off the TV and the movies for a while and pray and grieve and cry. I do it regularly because this is hard. I had no clue how hard this would be. I would like to say it gets easier, but it doesn't. Pray, grieve, cry. And number seven is kind of vague. And you know, so this is my 10th tip, but number seven for what to do, be proactive. Now this is a very slippery slope. So you have to like, draw a line, work, like for instance, you can work on your adoption website. You can work on your adoption profile on Adoptimist or with your agency. You can do a little research as to highly recommended specialists. Don't get on the fertility forums or fertility groups or Facebook to ask for advice and research. Don't do that because that puts you back to my list of don'ts and you will be automatically miserable. It, your brain gets jumbled. So if you're going to do research or if you're going to work on your website, give yourself a set time. Set a timer. Set a clock for one hour. Set your phone for one hour or 30 minutes or whatever and do the research then. And no matter where you are in your research or no matter where you are in updating your website, when the clock goes off, you stop and you move on to something else with your day. Or frankly, it just ends up like any other day where you're miserable and spinning in a whirling vortex of entropy. But another way you can be proactive is to do something really physically healthy for yourself to prepare yourself for the family that you're hoping to have. You know, we all wanna be healthy moms. We wanna be able to chase our kids around and have fun with them. And that requires being healthy. So, you know, go to the farmer's market and get some great fresh vegetables. Go to a park and go for a hike, go for a long walk, go for a long bike ride. Do something that's gonna get your endorphins up, it's going to help your muscles, help your heart, help your mind clear out. Spend that time being proactive. You'll feel better about yourself. That's proactive. That gets you closer to being a mom. So after eight years of experience, those are my 10 tips of survival for Mother's Day for the childless. And again, if you're watching this video, you clearly are because you need to. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all of us that we're there and, you know, 
we all remind ourselves that there is severe and intense pain in this world, but there are people who've lost their moms, and maybe you're one of them. And you know, if you are both childless and you've lost your mom, Mother's Day is that much harder of a day to get through. But these tips will help. But I'm telling you, those three don'ts, non-negotiable. Those are three don'ts. Or you might as well have not wasted your time watching this at all. If topics on family building, fertility struggles, beauty after the age of 35, uh, if these are things that appeal to you, I hope that you consider hitting subscribe. And if those things don't appeal to you, best luck on YouTube. I hope you find exactly what you're looking for. And if you are empty armed like I am this Mother's Day, I say a prayer for all of us that maybe this is the last Mother's Day we'll feel that way. Maybe this is the last Mother's Day that we will have an empty nursery sitting in our house. A prayer that maybe next Mother's Day we will know what it's like to look into our child's eyes. God bless you all. You sparkle. God made you the way that you are. I love you and most of all, God bless.